Have you ever been an alcoholic, a heavy smoker? Have you experienced waking up every day and immediately doing something that isn't good for you, but somehow you keep doing it? No? Well, have you played Valorant? Okay. You have to be fucking me! What the hell? Shut your fucking mouth, you bitch! If your answer was yes, then why are you still playing it? We all know the current state of the game right now. This is not a video that this is on Valorant. I myself enjoy playing it and have been grinding it competitively. The point I'm trying to make is, Valorant is extremely addictive. Every player knows this. We spend hours and hours grinding and shooting to the point that we start to feel numb. To make things even worse, you often get tilted and it usually ruins your mood. Back then, I get so tilted that I straight up uninstalled the game. There's so many things I don't like about this game, yet I still keep coming back. I spend hours upon hours every day just to grind. Do I just hate myself? Is it really worth it? Getting tilted sometimes and playing horrible is part of the game. Not all matches are gonna be able to do well. There are some games that the other team just did better. But I think we can all agree that there are some factors that are beyond their control. These things destroy the player experience. Have you ever had a match where you play normally and then suddenly there's a player that's clapping everyone in the lobby? You look at their score and you see a huge difference between them and their teammates and that's when you realize you're fighting against a smurf. Smurfing is when a higher ranked player logs onto a lower level account and play against lower ranked players to outperform and basically ruin their games. It's a big problem in Valorant. You usually see them playing a duelist, usually arena. I mean, literally. Reyna is an agent that makes player rely on their aim as it rewards fragging. It's literally made to stomp people. In all seriousness, we get frustrated over this. Sometimes you get frustrated so much that you log off your main account and start creating a smurf of your own. And then, you stomp other people and ruin their games. Thus, the cycle continues. At this point, if you play Valorant and haven't made a smurf yet, you're almost seen as weird. But this shouldn't be the case. But why is it? Why is it so common? Well, it's simple really. It's because it's easy to make a smurf. Like, really easy. You just click a couple buttons, fill up some fields, and that's literally it. You're not even required to verify your email to start playing the game. Hell, you're even allowed to use the same fucking email across multiple accounts. It's like Riot is deliberately encouraging us to create smurfs. Hell, I know someone who has seven smurfs. Seven. How is that even allowed? Clearly, there should be a bit stricter form of creating new accounts. I'm not saying that they should make it so hard that people won't bother trying the game anymore. For example, Overwatch 2 requires a postpaid phone number in addition to an email address in order to play. According to Blizzard, it is a form of protection from bad actors who use cheats and to discourage people from creating smurfs. Now, because of the strict requirements to play the game, does it lead to less players playing Overwatch 2? No! In fact, it popped off so much that people were playing it all the time. It even overtook Valorant in Twitch viewership. It's a common misconception that adding security and verification measures might turn off potential players. But the truth is, people will play your game if they want to play your game. Will it reduce the number of accounts made in the game? Absolutely, but it's not a loss, as most of those accounts would be smurfs, bots, and cheaters anyway. One of the reasons why they should be addressed is that players generally feel safer from punishments if their smurf account gets punished. What I mean by this is that some players may start doing terrible things and become extremely toxic and they're willing to risk the punishment because they are only using their smurfs. It's like giving a mask to someone and they show you their true nature and generally how almost everyone say the nastiest things online under the protection of anonymity. 
Now, this is not particularly unique to Valorant. We all know toxic comms exist in all games, and generally, it becomes a part of a competitive match. I mean, what fun is a competitive game without a bit of trash talk, right? For a lot of us, it's really fun. When trash talk is involved, the game becomes more euphoric and competitive, but also serious at the same time. It makes the game more tense, and you feel like the stakes are higher because your pride is on the line. However, Guys, yeah, fucking Spike horrible, fucking terrible fucking player that kid is. Sometimes people get so tilted that they start trash talking their own teammates out of frustration. Now, although this isn't good, I totally understand. Valorant is a very easy game to get lost in. Most of the time, you just get so invested in the match that as much as how proud and happy you'll be for winning a game, you'll feel just as much disappointed and frustrated when losing a game. Sometimes though, it gets too far. Sometimes, toxicity turns it to something else. Valorant is an FPS game unlike any other. It is unique, and I'm not talking about the uniqueness of its gameplay because Let's be real, nothing about this game was original when it came out. Alright, see you at happy hour. Oh, damn it! You idiot. You got your Overwatch characters and abilities in my CSGO. You got your CSGO gunplay movement in my Overwatch. It's mine. Wait. It's literally a combination of the mechanics of CSGO and utility usage of Overwatch. No, the uniqueness that I'm talking about is about its player base. Valorant blew up when it first came out, and it's been growing gradually since then, as it continues to build a very large player base and community. So much so that unlike its competitors with male-dominated player base, there's significantly more female players in Valorant. Personally, I think it's a good thing. It means that more people are willing to try the game, and both of them are having fun. It means that anyone can enjoy a fun, tactical shooter game. Funny enough, I also think this is a consequence of how easy it is to pick up the game. Not only does it lead to easier creation of new accounts that may cause smurfing, but it can also lead to new players willing to try it out because it's a very easy game to pick up and play. What this also means is that there is a significant market for female players in the scene, which is why there have been female pro teams and orgs that have been forming over the past couple years. This is great. It's a great step towards promoting and encouraging female gamers to compete. However, a large number of female players would also mean that extremely toxic players have an easier excuse for their behavior. Which is why sexism is a very big problem in Valorant nowadays. Hello. Anything you want. I can film. Again, this issue is not exclusive to Valorant, but most news about this in the gaming community usually happens within this game. Personally, I have played with my female friends on Valorant and whenever they try to speak or communicate, lots of the times, a teammate would try to be mean for no reason. A lot of times, gender usually becomes a talking point whenever guys get frustrated at the game instead of properly telling their teammates what they did wrong. It's not productive at all. Yeah. Yeah, I am, huh? Oh, 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 it's a fucking female talking to me! Get off the fucking game and do your husband dishes, bitch! Shut up! Fuck you! In my opinion, this behavior stems from the same type of mentality where a guy is deeply afraid of getting rejected by a girl, so he starts to build an unhealthy resentment to shield his insecurities. And honestly, that's sad. It's sad to see it happen online, least of all, a video game. In most cases though, people take it to the next level. On October 5th, a Serbian esports organization by the name of Rising Hope released an announcement that they are parting ways with their entire female Valorant team. Although there were no rumors about this, no one was really talking about it because Rising Hope isn't a very popular organization. However, later on, the former head coach of Rising Hope revealed the real reason for their team leaving the org. The details were graphic, but basically, during a Discord call meeting with a female Valorant team, one of the coaches, named Simons, inappropriately showed his micro wiener on camera. Yep, 
an esports coach did that. It's extremely embarrassing and sets a bad example for the Valorant community and the esports scene in general. And I'm guessing this isn't the only case of this happening and that this wouldn't be the last. So much has happened in the pro Valorant scene in the last couple months alone. One of the biggest things happened when Carlos Rodriguez, the CEO of G2 Esports, posted a tweet online where he was seen partying with a very polarizing influencer. Andrew Tate. For those who don't know, Andrew Tate is a very controversial figure. He's well known for his quote-unquote sexist and misogynistic statements. Ah, ah, you cheater, you cheating. It's bang out the machete, boom in her face, you grip her up by the neck. What's up, bitch? You go, fuck her. That's how it goes. Slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, set. Only recently, he was permanently banned from mainstream social media platforms. Numerous backlash happened because of this, as you may imagine. People were also speculating that this might be the major reason why G2 was denied a partnership for Valorant's Champions Tour, which eventually led to disbandment of its roster on October 18th. After this, Carlos stepped down as the CEO of the organization. With all these terrible things happening in the game right now, and even more that I'm not willing to talk about in this video, people are still playing. Why? Well, the answer is simple. It's cause it's fun. People would not play the game if it wasn't fun. And it's only fun because the devs actually listen to the community. The meta is constantly changing. With each update, everyone is forced to reset and adapt to new things. New things happen all the time. Back then, TSM and Sentinels were the top teams. Now, it's completely different. This is why Valorant is still active. The community feels like it's being heard. And the way I see it, Riot is doing what it can for the things that it can control. As an example, they dealt with the Carlos R G2 incident. Now whether or not you agree with that, let me know in the comments below. But I think we can all agree that Valorant can still be better, that it can improve further. There is no perfect and finished product because people change, things change. This is why the community exists. They give us a product, we give them feedback. It's up to us to make noise, to raise awareness in these issues, if ever we want the game to improve. Personally, I think Riot should be open to the idea of community-driven content. Aside from those that I already mentioned, part of the reason why smurfing exists is because there's no third-party platforms like Faceit. So, there's no hyper-competitive alternative aside from Rank. So players tend to smurf instead. Additionally, community-made skins and maps would be a great addition to the game. According to Google Trends, people are slowly losing interest in Valorant. And part of the reason why this is, is because there's nothing new in the game. All the game modes become stale after a while, especially if you're a casual player. I think community-made maps would be a great fresh update to the game because people would be able to make their own game modes. And then those game modes become popular over time. Who knows, they might even become their own separate games. This already happened with Dota, TFT, which is another Riot game. Innovative game modes would solve a lot of Valorant's current issues. I think Riot has already considered this idea. And whether or not they want to adopt it, no one really knows. The only thing we can do is wait for their future updates. I have confidence that they'll eventually release game-changing updates that would attract players once again. I think they can do it again. At the end of the day, I believe that just like everything else, if we give it time, it'll get better. I have a hope. With all that said and done, my conclusion to all of this is this. If you have a toxic teammate, mute them. Just do it.